Guys, we are officially on to week number five. These are my official college football week five full score picks for every single ranked matchup. And we begin on a Thursday night. Yes, they've got a little Thursday night game. That's what those two asterisks mean. This is an 8 o'clock game. It's BYU at home taking on Utah State. And folks, if you don't know... Utah State is just terrific. BYU comes in minus 24. I think it's going to be a very workman, business-like game for BYU. Maybe struggling a little bit last week against Wyoming. Although I think Wyoming is a really good football team. I've got BYU winning this game 48-17. Once again, Utah State really, really bad this year. I know they had a nice year last year. They lost some players. They're horrific this year. Give me BYU easily winning at home Thursday night game. So guys, this game will be dueling with the NFL. I expect this game to beat the NFL Amazon Prime Thursday night game in total ratings. And guys, college football will announce itself as the number one sport in America after this amazing BYU gets the win. What a matchup that is. Next, we've got a massive Pac-12 showdown. Undefeated UCLA after running through a gauntlet of a non-conference schedule. They are at home. This is a 10-30 Friday game. They're at home taking on a Washington team that's really hot right now, coming off a win against Stanford. And guys, you know what? I've got three words. Trust Chip Kelly. We all love Chip Kelly. He's a maverick. He's a motivator. He's a CrossFit champion. We love Chip Kelly. If we all had the opportunity to go on a date with him, I think we all would. He's a phenomenal dude. He's going to use his blubber to help UCLA beat Washington at home. And UCLA, UCLA wins this game, guys. What are they, 5-0? and Amazing. They would immediately be ranked. Guys, they're at home. It's the Rose Bowl. They've been making fun of the attendance there the first three games. It wasn't very good. The UCLA fans have heard people. They're pissed. They're going to sell that place out. And uh, uh, Washington is in for a rude awakening. 31-30 to UCLA with a little bit of an upset. Washington right now. Two and a half point favorites on the road. Kind of interesting note with Washington. We know they crushed Michigan State. But that win at home... It does look a little bit less impressive due to Michigan State's performance against Minnesota. I don't want to discount it. I I hate doing that. But you do have to factor in Michigan State kind of looking like a dumpster fire, getting absolutely outclassed by Minnesota. It kind of takes a little bit of sting out of that Washington win. Although I will say Washington destroyed Michigan State. I know the final score was 39 to 28. It was not that close. I will we got to give Washington credit. These Pac-12 teams, they're impressive. They are impressive. Let's move on to the Saturday slate. How about Michigan going to Iowa? avoiding the night game in Iowa. Congratulations to them. I think Michigan is just going to be on Big Noon every week, and I love it. Keep Ohio State off of Big Noon. Michigan can have every Big Noon game. Uh, But I have this one, 23-13. I love the under. You saw J.J. McCarthy last week kind of have some rookie, inexperienced struggles running around 10 yards behind the line of scrimmage. We know how great Iowa is on defense. Of course, it goes without saying, Iowa can simply not score. They beat you know Rutgers last week. They had two defensive touchdowns. They just cannot score. I love the under 43 in this game. Not so much on the spread. I actually think Michigan is minus 10.5 right now. I don't know if they'll cover it, um, but it's right on the border. I think Michigan gets a road win. Lower scoring, boring game. Iowa can't score, but they're really good on defense. Give me the under. J.J. McCarthy, his first big road start. I think he'll have some jitters. Michigan wins this game, but the under hits personally. That's what I think. Next, we've got an SEC slot fest. It's overrated. It's the battle of the overrated. Kentucky at Ole Miss. And guys, we've got Ole Miss trending minus six. This game opened at minus four. 
I personally have no clue what's going to happen. So when you have no clue what's going to happen, take the home team by three. That's what I'm doing. I think Kentucky is really fraudulent. I have no clue how they're a top 10 team after struggling with Youngstown State. You're struggling with Northern Illinois. I know they beat Florida. But I'm just not seeing Kentucky this year. And then Ole Miss, they're struggling with Tulsa. But I do, Ole Miss is at home. If this game was in Lexington, I'd pick Kentucky. But this is a game where Ole Miss is at home. I think they get it done. They get the win. Their offense has disappointed me this year. But they do win this one by three. That's a noon game. Next, we've got another major noon matchup. It's Oklahoma. Coming off their bad loss at home to Kansas State, they travel on the road to TCU, and what a, an amazing opportunity this is for TCU. If they win this game, they would be undefeated. They would instantly be probably ranked within the top 15, or well, probably top 20. Let's not get overzealous. Top 20. We've got Oklahoma as five-point favorites, and guys, based on history, Oklahoma normally always bounces back after a loss like they just suffered at home to Kansas State. Oklahoma's offense was still unbelievable. Dylan Gabriel, four passing touchdowns, very few incompletions, very efficient. I have faith that Brett Venables will get his defense back on track, and this is kind of a parody game. I don't see Oklahoma losing and, and and having two losses already, and I also don't see TCU staying undefeated. So if you add those two things together, Oklahoma wins, Oklahoma stays at one loss, TCU gets one loss, parity, it's simple math, folks. I'm an algebra genius. Oklahoma wins this game easily. Next, we've got another noon one, Purdue at Minnesota. Is this the Big Ten Network game? Maybe. It's either Big Ten Network or ESPNU. Uh, but Minnesota, what a start to the season. They are 4-0. We do got to say they did have a very bad non-conference schedule, but they crushed Michigan State in an absolute annihilation on the road. Aiden O'Connell, you know, what is happening with that situation? I was telling everyone last week the FAU-Purdue over 61 is a lock. There's literally Aiden O'Connell, There's we, we think he's healthy, and then Friday, they're like, oh, Aiden O'Connell's a game-time decision. I, what is going on with these college injuries? So we don't know if he's healthy, if he's going to play. So I'm going to say uh, that Minnesota will win this game. My one thing with Minnesota, are they just going to keep blowing teams out? I think this one's a little bit lower scoring. Purdue hangs in there. We'll see what the question marks surrounding the quarterbacks, but Minnesota's just been blowing everyone out. I think they're due to have a little bit of a closer game. The Big Ten needs Minnesota to be undefeated going to Penn State in the whiteout. That's going to be a huge matchup for the Big Ten. They need Minnesota to keep winning these games against teams like Michigan State, Purdue, you know, teams like Iowa, uh, you know, Nebraska, things like that. Minnesota has to win all of these games. It's so important. If they're going to be the representative out of the West for the Big Ten, very important that they have one loss or zero losses. We do expect them to probably lose to Penn State in their whiteout game. But how about that Penn State-Ohio State game? That game probably should have been Penn State's whiteout game. That's probably going to be a big noon game. You want to talk about lucking out. Ohio State, my goodness. Uh, the next game we've got, we've got Texas Tech. Major win they just had versus Texas. Emotional overtime field goal. They're traveling to Kansas State. And wow, what an up and down year it's been for Kansas State, guys. I had them as my dark horse to make a New Year's Six Bowl. They lose to Tulane where they were 14-point favorites. Then they come back 13-point underdogs and win on the road in Oklahoma. They are inside of the top 25. They are 7.5-point favorites. And guys, this is a game, Texas Tech, emotional win, comeback win. They were 6 of 8 on fourth down. Little bit of an aberration. Their offense is going to come back down to earth against a fundamentally sound Kansas State defense. Kansas State wins this game. It's a noon start time. The kids are going to be sleepy. The under's a lock in this one. I've got Kansas State 28-17. to We're on to a weird 2 o'clock game. This is the Pac-12 network game, I believe. At least that's, yeah, this is the Pac-12 network window time slot. Oregon State coming off their unfortunate loss, low scoring game to USC. They're on the road at Utah and everyone is saying Oregon State plus 11 is a lock. 
I do not believe that. I think this Utah team is on a mission. I love the over. Last week, it was an aberration. Oregon State has a good offense and a bad defense. This week, a lot of points will be scored. Utah, they're on a death march right now, folks. A death march, a warpath. They're going to crush Oregon State, surprise everybody, and cover the 11. I actually think this line's going to even go lower, probably get down to 10 or 9.5 because how many people love Oregon State in this matchup. Guys, it's a game where I respect Oregon State. They played USC close. They could have easily won, but we have to understand Utah is just on another level right now. After losing to Florida, they're crushing everyone. They're covering every spread. Get out of their way. It's crazy what Utah's doing. Now we're on to the 330 window. We've got Alabama traveling to Arkansas in a ranked matchup. Arkansas, you know, did just lose to AM, so that kind of takes some of the sting out of this game. This is the 330 CBS game. And guys, I'm the type of person where you've got to prove it to me. So like Alabama, they've had one big matchup, the offense, the receivers struggled. I just can't pick Alabama to score 45 points in this game just because they have Bryce Young. Arkansas, I feel like they're a team that plays up or down to the level of competition that they're facing. You know, the Missouri State game, but then they play A&M really close. They're at home, closer game. I respect Alabama's defense. That's why I can't pick the upset. But Alabama minus 16 is a lot. I understand why it's a lot. People don't like betting against Saban. But it's just like Alabama has to prove in big games that they have legitimate weapons. I know they've got a bunch of really highly ranked recruits. But we just saw a few weeks ago in week two, Alabama should have lost while scoring next to nothing, like 17 points. So um, I have Alabama winning this game, lower scoring, and Arkansas covers the 16-point spread. I think it's up to 16 and a half right now, by the way. Next, we've got the greatest rivalry in Big Ten history. Rutgers traveling to Ohio State. This is a primetime 3:30 matchup on the Big Ten Network. And folks, Ohio State listed as 41-point favorites. I do have the Buckeyes winning this game 55 to 10 over Rutgers. Rutgers just has an anemic offense. You know, they score 17 points against Temple. They follow that up doing nothing against Iowa, although Iowa does have a really good defense. But I think this is a game where Ohio State and Jim Knowles are really going to pin their ears back, get a few turnovers, uh, you know, kind of similar to the Wisconsin game. But the Buckeyes are, you know, 41-point favorites in this one. So, you, you know, we're obviously, this is like one of the biggest spreads of the weekend. The Buckeyes will win this game very easily. We're expecting C.J. Stroud to get his weekly four or five passing touchdowns, of course. Uh, and, and and I think J.S.N. is going to be out for this game as well. So they're trying to rest him right now. But this is a very, very easy win for Ohio. Again, I mean, there's a 98% chance to win. The only question is, do they cover the 41 I'm going to say yes, but it is a situation where you have to be careful with these really big spreads because if Ohio State, let's say, is up by 42 and it's late in the fourth quarter and they're playing their backups and, you know, Rutgers scores a late touchdown, you know, that's kind of the problem with these spreads. The ideal situation is Rutgers gets shut out in this game. If they get shut out, Ohio State undoubtedly will cover the 41 because Rutgers' offense is horrible. I just don't know if Rutgers scores a late touchdown. They might. In that case, Ohio State would have to put up another 50-burger to cover. Uh, the next 330 game, Oklahoma State at Baylor. Guys, how great is Baylor football? It's been unbelievable, and I have three words for this game. Trust Baylor football, guys. Trust Baylor football. They are two and a half point favorites. They're at home. This might be the FS1 game. Uh, I'm not sure exactly. You know, Oklahoma State is coming off a rare week. I think week three bye or week four bye. Yeah, they had a bye last week. So Oklahoma State, I have a lot of respect for their program. But Baylor right now, this is a parody game. Baylor gets this win. They have one loss. Oklahoma State has zero losses. Oklahoma State is on the road. Baylor gets the win. They stay at one loss. Oklahoma State goes to one loss. They both have one loss. It's simple math. I took AP classes, folks. That's exactly why I know how to do math. Next, we've got 
Northwestern, oh my goodness, Northwestern traveling to Penn State. This is the 3.30 game on ESPN. I don't know how this game's on ESPN. It is Penn State listed as 25 and a half point favorites. They didn't cover their 25 point spread last week against Central Michigan. I think they do cover this one. Northwestern is just horrifically bad. They just lost to another Max school, Miami of Ohio, only scoring 14 points. I do have Penn State. They're another team that's on a warpath right now. They're trending towards being a top 10 team in the country if they keep winning, and they're going to have a major, major matchup with Minnesota in the whiteout, and then they've got another huge home game against Ohio State, and I'm not sure if the Michigan game is at home. Oh yeah, they go on the road to Michigan, because you guys remember last year, Michigan beat Penn State in a 21-17 home, home game at but it wasn't Penn State's whiteout. It was weird. So the Penn State has major games coming up. This will be an easy win. They're going to rest their starters late in the second half. Northwestern is a dumpster fire again this year, folks. Next, we've got Wake Forest traveling to Tallahassee to take on Florida State. There is a major hurricane, Ian, coming in, but it's supposed to be out of the Tallahassee area, I believe by Thursday. So this game should have no problem with the weather, we're looking at the over-under right now at around 63 maybe, it's, it's or maybe 66. It's a very high number. I do have Wake Forest winning this game. This is another parody game. Wake Forest, they played so well last week. Sam Hartman, the offense is humming. They're getting their running game going a little bit. And then Florida State, I've disrespected them all year. I guess I'm going to continue to disrespect them because I just don't think they're that talented. And this is a game where Wake Forest's offense is going to be a little bit better. You know, let's remember, Florida State is a team that could have very easily lost at home to Louisville in that Thursday night game. They did come back and win. But folks, I like Wake Forest. They showed me a lot against that Clemson defense, Sam Hartman picking them apart. Wake Forest definitely has their deficiencies and things like that on defense and trying to run. But FSU, if they go to 5-0, I will be shocked but I, I'll also credit them if they do go to 5-0. The next game, it is a 4 o'clock start. It is A&M traveling to Mississippi State. And guys, the name of the game with Texas A&M, close, low-scoring games. I have no clue what's going to happen in this one, but I do have Mississippi State winning this football game by one point. A&M, the major issue I have is just the quarterback position. They switch to Max Johnson I guess he's serviceable. He's a game manager. I don't think AM is going to have as much success running the football against Mississippi State as they did against Arkansas. Their offense is extremely one-dimensional. They just lost one of their receivers who's out for the year. I will take Mississippi State, who has a higher offensive ceiling at home, winning this game. It's an AM classic. It's low scoring. It's close. And it's Mississippi State getting a major win. 24 to 23. We've got a 7 o'clock game, so we're on to the 7 o'clock late window. Uh, it is Georgia traveling to Missouri. G Georgia listed as 27 and a half point favorites. And I, I have to do this. I have to go with Georgia to win 49-7. to Missouri is horrific. They can't score. Uh, they just scored, what did they score, 14 points in an overtime game against Auburn. Their offense is terrible. Georgia coming off that disappointing performance against Kent State. Guys, Georgia knows they didn't cover last week. They're 27 half point favorites. They're going to want to cover. They're going to want to overperform. Their defense is going to be pissed after giving up 22 points to Kent State. They will win this game 49-7. Next, we've got NC State. This is the big 7-30 top 10 matchup. It's NC State at Clemson. And I do think this could potentially be DJ Uilangile's coming out party. They win this game 38-28, to maybe even 45-28. to we understand DJ Uyangile is improving. He's looking better. My one big concern with Clemson is their secondary, and they have a pathetic defensive coordinator. They really do have a bad defensive coordinator. Dabo might have to just completely take over the defensive play calling. Um, Clemson, you know, the pass interference is leaving cornerbacks on an island, but I think in a situation where it's a 7:30 home game, they've got the home crowd advantage. They're listed as seven-point favorites. DJ is finally looking like a five-star. Will Shipley in the backfield. The place is going to be rocking. I will. It is the fake uh, Death Valley. It's the fake Death Valley. 
I do have Clemson winning 38-28. to uh, We've got an 8 o'clock game. Georgia Tech, who just fired their head coach, they will be in Pittsburgh to take on Pitt. And um, guys, I am just not buying Pittsburgh this year. I'm really not. They beat Rhode Island by 21, I think. I have them winning this game, but this could be a game where Georgia Tech is really galvanized after firing their head coach. They will make this a game. They will cover the spread. Lower scoring game that Pittsburgh does win, but Georgia Tech will show fight in this game. They've been a complete dumpster fire this year. I think they're talented enough to at least challenge a Pittsburgh team that, quite frankly, I don't think should be ranked at this point. The late, late games. This is a 10-30 game. It is uh, Arizona State traveling to USC. Arizona State, a total dumpster fire. USC is due for a major offensive explosion after scoring only 17 points last week. And Caleb Williams was like, what was he, 16 of 36 passing the ball? I've got USC maybe getting to 50. I've got them at 49 to 17, 25 point spread. Yeah, I mean, that's how bad Arizona State is. Arizona State got crushed by Utah at home, uh, and they lost that game by like 25 or something. So I have USC very easily bouncing back on offense in an easy home matchup against Arizona State. I'm guessing this is the late night Fox game. Or maybe FS, or maybe ESPN. I really don't know, guys. And then we have an 11 o'clock game. Jesus. Uh, we So this is an 11 o'clock start. It is Stanford at, or oh yes, I remember this one. Guys, I have three words for you. Trust David Shaw. Ups, upset special, David Shaw. You heard it here first. Guys, we, college football needs Oregon to lose. We thought that it was going to happen last week. It's nothing against Oregon, but it's just the way the dynamic works with Georgia beating Oregon. We need Oregon to lose, and I think David Shaw, phenomenal coach. This Stanford program coming off their loss you know, against Washington, they're going to be pissed. They're being disrespected by everyone. They're 16 and a half point underdogs. They're talented. They're going to win this game in Eugene. This is a late night 11 o'clock game. Oregon's going to come out sleepy. They're not going to take it seriously. Bo Nix is going to have a meltdown. He's going to have a few turnovers. Stanford with a major upset. Upset. Trust David Shaw, ladies and gentlemen. This is a major, major upset alert for the University of Oregon. We thought it was going to happen last week. I looked at my phone. Washington State was up by two scores with four minutes left. I looked at it about 10 minutes later. They're down by 15 points. No, they were down by like 10. I'm like, how does that? how is that possible, folks? It doesn't make any sense. But I do have Stanford getting this win. And that's going to do it. That has to be the last game. Unless Hawaii is playing a ranked team. We know they play at 11.59 some weeks. Because they don't. it doesn't, like, the reason Hawaii's games are at 11.59, they don't want it to be at midnight because then it'll be on Sunday. Right? Now, obviously, Hawaii is four hours behind us, but that's why. I don't know if Hawaii is at home this week. I'd have to look at that to see if they play at 11.50. But either way, guys, Hawaii is not relevant. They're actually one of the worst teams in FBS. That is going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.